Okay, welcome everyone to week three of Eat Clean, Get Lean. And uh, we're at a point now where a lot of us are at um, been working the shakes two times a day and eating the whole food meals. And we have people coming back. I've had people walk in saying I've lost 12 pounds. I've lost five pounds from another person. I was with someone last night. Um, started a little bit prior to uh, when we started, but is on the same program with us and has lost over 20 pounds. So this really works for those people who are working it. Um, a lot of people are really getting into the supplementation end that we talked about in week one and how important it is for your body to have the right vitamins and minerals and supplementation in order to utilize the food that you're eating. Um, you it's not what you eat it's what you can absorb and things like probiotics help with absorption and uh, there's certain vitamins and minerals that facilitate the uptake of certain nutrients that the body needs so it's very very important that um, we try to eat clean in order to get lean and tonight I'm going to hit on two very specific topics one is going to be the use of alcohol and how it could stall your progress and we're also going to talk a little bit about walking. But as always, in the first four weeks, we're going to do a little bit of a, of a review of um, what, we, what we're doing and what to do if something's not working. Now, some of you have used me uh, for a lot of information and have been able to make a lot of positive change. And I'm getting some good feedback from you. And some others I haven't heard from in two weeks. So... If you need my help, we're here. That's what you paid for, for a coaching program. And the only way I can coach you is if we interact. <laughs> so if it's your intention just to kind of uh, be like a ghost and listening to things and you're doing your own thing and that's you're happy with that, that's fine. But for others, if you're not hitting your goals and you're not seeing change, well, then you need to get in touch with Susan and I. And we are, we're here to help you. So let's move on. The first thing is, if you have not taken your HIPAA-compliant nutrition assessment yet, you should do that. You can go to MikeKeenan520.idlife.com. It is a free assessment, and you'll also get a free report. And I tell people as you're going through the assessment, there'll be videos along the way. Watch those videos. It'll enhance the experience you get. And at the end, there'll be recommendations on what vitamins and supplements you should be taking. So we've, we've kind of talked about that. So uh, again, if you want to come into my office or you need to do it over the phone and you want to talk about the reports and you want to talk about the assessment and you want to talk about your recommendations, we certainly can do that. A lot of people are using the base kit now. They're using the shake. Uh, the shake is a great source of your protein plus your fiber. And it, again, qualifies as a protein because it has more protein protein and fiber in it, then it has carbohydrates and fat. <laughs> and people feel very satisfied. And what they're doing in the morning is they're mixing the shake and then they're adding a scoop of energy into it. And the energy you can drink um, whenever you would normally drink coffee. And uh, it has loaded with vitamins, minerals, and electrolytes, something that your coffee isn't. So um, it is superior to coffee and what it does for your body. And then the lean. The lean is really good because it helps to control the sugar cravings. And I know a lot of people are taking it before lunch and they're taking it before dinner. And it helps them stay on track. <clears throat> Some people, like myself, I'll take it before a heavy workout. helps to keep my blood sugar stable. And we have a lot of the tricks of the trade that we'll be adding in along through weeks 4, 5, 6, all the way out through 12. Okay, and people were asking about the cost. Uh, I threw this slide in here today. We have uh, ID Life, we have company A, B, and C. These represent a lot of the other popular ones that are on the market. I can't name them by name because I don't want to get into any trouble. But if you look across, our calories are significantly lower per serving than most of the others. Our grams of fat are lower. Our carb, total carbohydrate is significantly lower, as is the sugar, and our protein is competitive at 23 grams, and that's good for most people. Now, if you're like me, you're probably going to need two scoops of the protein powder to get up to more like 46 grams of protein. Again, we're using a whey isolate. 
uh, as opposed to the way concentrate because we do not have lactose and we do not have casein in our shakes where the others do. Um, we also have the uh, micromilk chia seed that helps with healthy essential fats and also with fiber. So let's start off with our normal, is your heck in check? And if it's not, what are we going to do about it? Well, again, we want the hunger to be less than five, the energy to be greater than six, and your cravings to be less than five. We're going to assess, is your heck in check? Is your body composition changing? We should all should be using the weight body shape calculator by metabolic effect. It helps to give you your waist to hip ratio, ratio your, for the men for your chest to waist ratio. It also tells you your percent body fat. We're going to investigate the four scenarios. We'll talk about those in a minute. And what do we modify? Well, if to, in order to keep our heck in check, we want to increase protein, fiber, and water. And if we're not losing weight, we may need to adjust the amount of fat and carbohydrate in our diet. So again, how do we get our heck in check? The first step is making sure you have adequate sources of protein, fiber, and water. Step two, if that's not keeping your heck in check, you're going to add 10 grams of fat. Again, that most people are going to go with a salad dressing on that or probably about 10 almonds. If that doesn't work, take the fat out and add starch into the meal. And that could be three bites or about a half a cup of things like sweet potato, brown rice, quinoa, oatmeal. If that's still not working. We're going to add in uh, the fat back in. That could be a sweet potato with olive oil as an example. And if that's not working, we need to add snacks into your program. But the only way I'm going to know what you need to do is by corresponding with me so we can talk about these things. So tonight I wanted to touch base on alcohol and walking. Now, what we're going to get out of this tonight is that if your goal is to lose stored body fat, okay, adding alcohol into your diet is going to stall that completely. Studies have shown that even small amounts of alcohol have a huge impact on fat metabolism. Fat metabolism means fat burning. Dropping whole body lipid oxidation, which is a measure of how much fat your body is burning, it'll drop it by up to 73%. That's pretty significant. So why is that? Well, how does this all happen? Well, the reason why alcohol has this dramatic effect on fat metabolism has to do with the way alcohol is handled in the body. When alcohol is consumed, it readily passes from the stomach and intestines into the blood and goes directly to the liver. In the liver, an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase mediates the conversion of alcohol to acetaldehyde. Uh, acetaldehyde. Sorry, <laughs> couldn't get that out. Um, and what this is, this is a precursor to sugar. So it's rapidly converted to acetate by other enzymes. So rather than getting stored as fat, the main fate of alcohol is conversion to acetate. And the amount of acetate formed is dose dependent on the amount of alcohol is consumed. So for example, blood levels of acetate after drinking vodka were two and a half times higher than normal. And it appears that this sharp rise in acetate puts the brakes on fat loss. So alcohol has seven grams, seven calories per gram. Carbohydrates have four calories per gram, and fat has nine calories per gram. So you can see that alcohol kind of fits between carbohydrate and fat is how many calories per gram. So keep in mind that your body wants to burn uh, stored body fat, but it's being blocked by the alcohol you just consumed, and it starts burning that, and it has seven calories per gram. So there's a lot of energy there in the alcohol. So the alcohol converts to acetate, which is used in the Krebs cycle of energy metabolism. So it'll burn before the body burns anything else. Now, we talked about the Krebs cycle and happening in the mitochondria, and that's where your body burns fat and oxygen and converts it into something called ATP, which is your monetary unit of energy. In other words, when you're, you need to lift, push, pull, and carry, your body uses ATP to do that. It's, a, it's an energy substrate. Kind of think of it as like gasoline, for lack of better terms, okay? Um, so if your body's burning uh, alcohol before it burns anything else, it can't burn fat. That just kind of makes sense. So since alcohol has almost double the amount of calories than carbs do, 
it takes twice as long to burn off, slowing fat burning even further. And with alcohol in the system, insulin levels increase and it systematically lowers resting blood sugar levels. Okay, so insulin is a heat seeking missile and it will stay active until it acts on sugar, including resting blood sugar. Now, this will make a lot more sense in just a moment. Give me another slide or two to, to get everybody uh, caught up here. So more carbohydrates are moving into storage from blood sugar because of the amount of insulin that's released with the consumption of alcohol. Remember, I said insulin is like a heat-seeking missile, and it needs to act on something. And it'll start to store the sugar in your blood and to convert that into stored body fat. Okay, so it's kind of like picking boxes up and loading up the truck. Okay. So now that's going to increase the amount of hunger and cravings that you have because your brain is going to realize that it's not getting the energy it needs. Now, hunger is because the brain cannot metabolize alcohol for energy and cravings start to increase the consumption of carbohydrates to feed the brain and nervous system. So we have many hormonal shifts going on. Now, it does two things. It slows fat burning down and increases fat storage. So decreasing hormone sensitive lipase, which is a fat burning enzyme, and increasing lipoprotein lipase, which is a fat storing en enzyme, is what's going on. So you're burning less fat, you're storing more fat. You can also get a decreased testosterone, which will help, which by decreasing testosterone, that slows down your metabolic rate even further, and you start to get an increased inflammation such as swelling of the abdomen and moon face. That's where you get a lot of swelling in your face. And if we remember back to our college days, you saw this a lot with people, especially the thinner girls. They, they started getting a lot of uh, fluid retention in their face, and, and that's called moon face because your, your face is just getting swollen, and you could see it. So to a quick conclusion, I think I've made a case that in our 12-week program, there is no alcohol consumption, okay? Because everyone on the phone call, well, mo the vast majority of the people on the phone call are looking to lose weight. Now, if you're more of the fitness person and weight loss is not an issue, again, we still want to keep our alcohol consumption at a moderate pace. You don't want to be drinking, doing shots every night after dinner. <laughs> but again, everyone who's on the call has their reason for being on this call and being part of our group. So I'm trying to give you the best advice possible so that you can achieve your goals. Okay, again, just as a reminder, foods to avoid in the first four weeks are dairy, peanuts. Some of us are still avoiding eggs because we're trying to figure out if we have an allergy to it or not. Uh, soy, alcohol, of course, wheat, gluten, artificial sweeteners, and other food chemicals. Now, some of these Hopefully, we're going to completely eliminate forever, like soy, like wheat, gluten, artificial sweeteners, and food chemicals. Remember, we talked about how food chemicals avoid, um, affect the weight regulating mechanism in the hypothalamus that either makes you burn fat or store fat. Okay, let's talk a little bit about walking. Walking is a crucial part of this program. We've talked about this. We'd, we're all doing two strength training sessions a week, and we're trying to walk every day. So walking facilitates gene expression. That's changing how genes or proteins align themselves and how the cell membrane communicates with the nucleus of the cell to either increase or decrease the production of fat-burning enzymes and hormones. It's all about perception. So, you know, when we were in college, we were taught that the nucleus is the brain of the cell, but that's not really true. The nucleus is the reproductive center of the cell. The brain of the cell is the cell membrane. It interprets the environment it's in and then tells the rest of the cell what to do. So it's very, very important that with walking, we can start to facilitate how the body is perceiving itself. Now, our ancestors, the only, reason, only time they walked long distance is when they were safe and there was plenty of food available. Otherwise, what did they do? When it was snowing outside and there was no food available, they sat and they rested. And that's a very strong neurological signal to the brain and nervous system to slow the process down, slow metabolism down, because if the metabolism keeps going quickly, 
you're going to starve to death. But when we're walking, we give the body the exact opposite message. We're saying food is plentiful and, and it's very safe. So let's go ahead and speed up metabol metabolism. Let's get, let's get this person leaner, bigger, stronger, greater endurance because we can fuel the body. That's why we're walking. So with body weight, like so many of our individual characteristics, it, the combined result of the genes we're born with and the way we live our lives, how much and what we eat and whether we exercise. The question is, how much does one influence the other? Well, there's been a lot of different studies, and one study that came out said that walking for about an hour a day can reduce weight-promoting effect of certain genes by 50%. What, uh, what's more, the scientists say sedentary activities like watching television can trigger the weight gaining effect of the same genes. So this goes to talk about my, my thoughts about perception, okay? If your body is walking, your body perceives it's okay to start to lose weight, and it changes the gene expression of these genes by over 50% into weight loss as opposed to sitting, which triggers this response of weight gain. Okay, so it's not just the genes you're, both, bo you're born with, it's the perception of what, you're, what your body's perceiving based on your food and your activity level. Okay, there was a study in menopause, the Journal of the North American Menopause Society suggested that walking at least 10,000 steps a day doesn't necessarily boost muscle strength or balance of women, but it does have the effect on decreasing body fat and weight. The women that study were between 50 and 70 years old, Reuters reported. So a lot of us are using a Fitbit to track their daily steps. And if you're looking for a Fitbit, you can go to keenanmedicalfitness.com backslash store, and we market Fitbits there. And I think they're about $99. And you have a piece that goes into your computer, and every time you pass by your computer, it uploads how many steps you've taken so far for that day. It also helps to track your sleep to see how well you're sleeping. It's a great tool. Okay, so in conclusion, the authors acknowledge that it may not be the act of TV watching itself that enhances the activity of the weight promoting genes. It may be that people who watch more TV also tend to eat more and exercise less, for example. But the latest, latest findings provide some hope that even if you're not blessed with lean genes, and many of us aren't, you can modify the fattening effect of your DNA by changing how you live your life. Okay, it's a short one tonight, guys. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my software here, and I'm going to see if there's any questions, that any, if anybody has any questions. So I'm going to go into my little chat here. And whoops, I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna say any whoops questions. And of course I know that I'm on a delay to you guys, so um, I'll wait. Um, typically speaking, after these uh, webinars, I usually go up onto Facebook and answer questions. I won't be able to do that tonight. But I will be available on Facebook tomorrow and Friday and Saturday, not Sunday. Sunday I take off, and Monday and Tuesday next week. Um, I certainly hope after tonight's call you realize that if losing stored body fat and getting leaner is your goal, how alcohol can slow down the progression of achieving that goal. I'm not saying don't have another drink the rest of your life. What I'm saying is during these 12 weeks, it's good to have focus and do the right things. You know, drinking your shakes, doing your strength training exercises, um, making sure you're getting your walking in, making sure you're getting enough sleep at nighttime. We've, we've really talked a lot about the importance of going to sleep and staying asleep. We've really talked a lot about the evidence of how staying hydrated helps you to hit your goal. So many times, and we'll talk more about hydration in, in later weeks, um, I have people who I got started getting them hydrated, and they said, you know, my sugar cravings have gone down, and I'm not as hungry because we sometimes confuse the thirst mechanism with the hunger mechanism. Big, big difference. Um, obviously, big difference. And it's important that you stay hydrated. And 
all your systems work so much better when you're hydrated. It's a lot easier for the cells to function when they're hydrated. You also tend to flush all the toxins out of your body when you're hydrated. Think of um, you're in a canoe and the river level starts to drop and now your canoe is hitting the bottom of the of the lake or the stream that you're in. You can't go anywhere. Okay, you got to get off and stand on the side and maybe wait for them to open the dam so more water can flow through the river and then you can get back in your canoe and move on your way. It's the same thing with the toxins in your body. When when you're dehydrated, your body loses the ability to eliminate those toxins. Moreover, for people who have hypertension and you're dehydrated, okay, it causes a spasm of the small vessels in your kidneys, which in turn increases your blood pressure. Think about squeezing a garden hose. What happens? The pressure goes up. And so the water flowing nice, it starts to spurt out the end. So there's so many reasons for to be properly hydrated. I'm already talking about week four stuff in week three. Isn't this exciting? Um, you know, there's things like, um, you know, your cognitive ability is affected by dehydration. Your ability to digest food is affected by hydration. And um, even joint problems, like things like arthritis and disc dysfunction, is affected by hydration. So... I don't see any questions coming up. Um, like I said, this is this was a short week. There is no reason to, to go on any further if nobody has any questions. So I'm going to hang up, but I am available by Facebook. I would really like to start getting a little more feedback. I would love to see some uh, measurements come in this Friday. I'd love to see some new pictures come in. Some of these people, some of you people, are doing really, really well. There's no problem with sharing that with us. Okay, no one else is going to see it except you and I and Susan. Okay, everybody have a great night, and uh, I'll talk to everyone shortly. And again, look for Susan's emails to still come at you daily. Oh, here we go. Um, okay, um, someone just asked for the slides, Jim. They are, um, I don't have that ability, but I can you're going to have the ability to listen to the webinars over and over again. So you actually will have the slides forever. So, um, well, why don't we talk when I, when I see you, uh, this week, we can talk a little bit more about this, but thanks for asking. But, um, the, the slide deck, I don't have the ability to get those to you, but again, you will always have the recording of these, um, webinars. So therefore you, always have access to the slides. You can watch them over and over again as often as you like. All right. That's it. Everybody have a great night, and I'll talk to you shortly. Go Rangers. Bye-bye. <laughs>